In 2016, Lafayette women's soccer got its first ever postseason victory, and the Leopards look to continue that tradition into 2017. I'm Adam Dobrovolsky here alongside head coach Mick Statham, and part of continuing that tradition is obviously bringing in new recruiting classes, and we want to talk about seven new recruits coming in to the Lafayette women's soccer family. Coach, last year's team, a very good team in terms of character, determination, getting that first postseason victory, getting it on the road against the top rival in the Patriot League uh, quarterfinals. How is this recruiting class going to continue some of the good, strong character points that the team last year had? Well, they're all good players and they're all really good kids that suit the personality of what we have returning on the team. Um, I get along with them very well. They fit my personality, I think. Uh, we never fully know, obviously, until they get here. Uh, but I think we've got a good group coming in. They're talented. They got, you know, good, uh, the good strong students, and they've, you know, they got good senses of humor, and they're very easy to, to get along with. So I, I, I think we'll we'll be okay. Now let's get to those individual players. We'll start things off, kind of local area in Pennsylvania from Notre Dame High School, Krista Kissel. Mm -hmm. What does she bring to the table? She set the scoring record at her high school, all PA player, 126 points scored in her high school career. Overall, what is she going to bring to this program? Well, goals change the face of games. So you need to score more goals than the other team to win games. And that's what hopefully Chris is going to bring to the table uh, is a scoring threat. She's got good pace. Uh, she's a good soccer player in general. She's intelligent. Um, but she's quite direct. She wants to score goals, and I think any striker um, should want to score goals. She reminds me a little bit of uh, Kaylin in some mm -hmm. ways, different because you know Kaylin's lefty and Krista's a right footer, but um, they're similar styles in some ways. Um, so that's that'll be an interesting thing to see Krista develop, but. You know, the, I think the biggest thing she's going to bring is is a scoring threat for us. And a great thing that you mentioned, Kaylin King, who was one of the leading players on offense last year, and we saw the development of some of the younger players. And obviously, with Kaylin and Melissa Linsky being seniors uh, this past season, you, you now have to have some of those players step up. But ha have you seen uh, the personality of Krista be the type of person that's going to mesh with some of these other attacking players who are returning? Yeah, I think so. I mean, she's uh, really easy going, uh, which I think is great. Um, but when she plays, she's she's dynamic and she wants to do well and she's ambitious. And like I said before, she she lives for scoring goals. So when you have, you know, some humility attached with a thirst for winning, uh, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good combination. So, yeah, I think she'll fit in great. Another player who had some good scoring experience at the high school level, Claire Mangle, who hails from Greens Farm Academy in Connecticut, 62 goals, 42 assists uh, in her high school career, and also having uh, some good club experience, was ranked several years uh, by top drawer soccer in the top 150. What might she also help to bring to the table in that attacking front? Well, she's multidimensional. Claire can play in a number of positions which will really help us system-wise be a lot more flexible. Um, we'll be able to play all different kinds of layers, I think, uh, just because of Claire's flexibility. She's an excellent runner with the ball. Uh, she's very skillful. Like you said, she's capable of, of scoring some goals. Um, she's a uh, She's got excellent technique, very creative, uh, but it also is willing to uh, be part of a team. And that's you know an important piece is making sure all of this knits together with all 11 players that are out there rather than you know different individuals playing. So she's, uh, I, I think, gonna give us a lot of flexibility. She can play wide, she can, um, she can play in the midfield, she can play uh, kind of as an eight and a half, if you like, a more advanced attacking central midfield player, um, which I think is probably what her role is going to be here. Um, but 
she she just had something completely different for us, uh, which is of course the more dimensions we have, the more flexibility we'll have when we're attacking. Going to flip a little bit to the defensive side, uh, a four-year starter, all-league defender from Ridgewood High School in the Garden State, Emma LaFrance. What is her strongest suit as a defender and from what you saw from her club play and her high school play? Well, I think the biggest compliment I can give Emma as a defender is she's a good defender. And a lot of defenders, recruits will come in my office and tell me they're a defender and then tell me how good they are at attacking. And that's... <laughs> you know, a bonus, but defenders have to be able to defend, first of all. Um, and Emma's a really good defender. And again, she had some flexibility. I think she can play either side, either side as outside back or she can play center back, uh, which again gives us a little bit of flexibility. Uh, but overall, I think she's just a really good defender, which is, you know, becoming a little bit of a lost art. Um, but you know, you, you need that to, to also win games, clean sheets. You know, you're always in the game if you, you don't give up any goals. Another player, uh, three-year varsity player, all-county player, multi-sport player, Cameron Monfort. She's from uh, Long Island and Syosset. What does she bring to the table? Is there anyone on the roster that she might remind uh, fans of eventually? Well, I think she's, again, Cameron's multidimensional also. Um, there's a little bit of a theme with that because, you know, the good soccer players. So, you know, good soccer players should be able to play anywhere. I mean, Cameron's been well coached at club level and um, has played in, in different positions. She's very good technically. She's a confident uh, player and person off the field. She's got a, a good, good personality. Again, as far as... Uh, comparisons go uh, I, I couldn't really you know really compare her to anyone we have uh, have had lately uh, she's again a little bit different than than some of the players we've we've had lately but she's um, very capable with the ball and and uh, should be able to add some you know different facets to our game she should be immediate impact Maggie Paul is from uh Kind of local area, central PA from the Lancaster area. Played club ball, was a captain as a senior, all league honors, also played basketball. So we see another multi-sport star has that athleticism. Overall, how might she fit into this program? Well, I think she'll be ready to go straight away. Um, obviously with losing Dan, um, that's, you know, some big shoes to fill for Maggie because, you know, Dan had a really good career here and, was uh, a big part of our locker room personality wise as well as you know talent wise and, and Maggie's got a big personality and again has good confidence and really good ability uh, so I think she should be ready you know to hit the ground running she's very talented um, she's strong physically uh, she's a good kicker of a ball and good hands so there's no reason that she shouldn't you know take to college soccer you know pretty pretty easily um and again she's she's a really nice down-to-earth uh humble person and i i just think that sets them up really nicely for when they when they get here because they're prepared to work without any you know expectations of anything and that that stands them in good stead uh, another player who's kind of round pa garden state long island rebecca schreiner she hails from east islip it was a two-year captain, all-county, all-league, club ball, had some tennis and basketball experience as well. Overall, what does she bring to the table for the program? Well, she can really, really strike a ball well. And I think in uh, the women's game, uh, I think that's a big asset to have is uh, if you can put some pace on the ball when you strike it, uh, it's, it's something not everyone can do. And I think that's a big benefit. She's a really good ball striker. Uh, she's an excellent athlete, uh, again, multi-dimensional. We see her more um, in a, a wider area probably than, than anywhere else, but she can play you know, centrally um, down the middle uh, if necessary. She can also play as a wing back if, if we really needed her to. Mm -hmm. She's got a little bit of experience there, but uh, we see her you know, somewhere in the um, 
in the midfield or as a forward, but she's, again, technical, good athlete, um, really, really nice girl that uh, will really work work hard um, and, again, come in and I think should be, should be ready to go straight away. And finally, we look a little bit to the other side uh, of the nation in California. Sophia Saldivar, four-year player, was a senior captain, track and field, cross country. So, you know, obviously she has that running ability. Uh, we've seen players that we talk about here that, that are multidimensional. Is she another one of those players having that multi-sport experience? Yeah, I think that helps. But I also think with all these players uh, and you know, Sophie included is um, the smart soccer players. So, you know, if you're a good decision maker and you understand the game, you can play in more than one position. And Sophie's very similar. She can play holding centre midfield. She can play attacking centre midfield. She can play up front if necessary. I've seen her play in a couple of different spots for a club team that she's played extremely well um, when I've been watching her. Uh, but Primarily, she'll come in as a midfield player and you know see how that goes. But um, excellent feet, uh, really good disposition for playing, uh, great decision maker, really nice person, uh, really great, great to talk to and easy to get along with, and, and a very good athlete. So uh, I'm very excited about Sophie coming in because um, I just think. You can never have too many good players, and I think all these girls are, are really good players. I'm, I'm really excited about them. Yeah, and I think you've really done a great job of illustrating it for the fans who might be watching this that really it's more than just individual experience. Good people, versatile people, smart people in terms of how they play the game and are willing to work with teammates. That really elevates the team. They can fit into more than one spot. Any other thing you, you can kind of say to just – sum that all up to really drive home that theme of these players who are smart, down-to-earth type of people, great in the classroom, obviously, which we'll talk about for our final question. But it seems like that they're going to be the type of players that, yes, they obviously bring great things individually, but they help to make the team greater than the sum of the parts. Yeah, I think that's why um, both myself and, and Brian uh, actually have done a really good job with this classes because – I think it's a reflection on Lafayette women's soccer in 2017. Um, I think the players that we have graduating, the eight girls that we have graduating, are um, a standard, you know, that we look towards in um, bringing in new classes, uh, where certainly the incoming freshmen do not have the experience that seniors that are graduating have. Personality-wise, um, they're similar in some ways, um, but the returning players we have are, are great characters, they're great people. Uh, we get along uh, very well. They're humble. They're again good senses of humour, and represent the college really well. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we want to keep that going as as much as we can. And I think we've done. I think this group is a really, really good group in part because of their talent, for sure. But also, they are great fits with what we have uh, in the locker room and what's graduating and what's coming back. Um, I just think they kind of sum up, you know, what we're all about. Yeah, that was my final question I wanted to get to in terms of the classroom. How do these incoming players reflect what the program has been about academically and obviously what the Patriot League in total has been about academically? Well, when you're a coach at Lafayette or a player at Lafayette, then you recognize that there are two really big pieces to life, and that is your academics and obviously your sports, because you're a mm. Division One athlete or mm. coach. And those, have, uh, those are big, big commitments. And then also there's the community feel of Lafayette, and most people will will agree that Lafayette is a great community because there's a certain feel to it. There's a family type of uh, feel to it. It's um, somewhere where people like to work and like to live and like to go to school. So our classes should reflect all of those three to the highest order. We just can't have 
good in one and then kind of uh, come up a little short in the other two categories. We've got to try and, you know, smash it in all three categories. And um, I, I'm really pleased with where the, the current team is at. Uh, our seniors have, you know, been fabulous. I'm really, really sad to see them go. But, you know, the great thing about college sports is it's a new team every year. So I'm really excited about what's coming in and where our future's heading. Yeah, it quickly goes from that bittersweet feeling to that exciting feeling. And obviously with seven here incoming to this new class, exciting times. Thank you very much, Coach, for sitting down with me. You got it. And of course, for more information, you can log on to goleopards.com as you can follow Lafayette women's soccer throughout the off season and heading into the 2017 season. Once again, with head coach Mick Statham, I'm Adam Dobrovolsky.